Greetings Earthlings, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sumit Chatterjee, I'm a flow state specialist, so I'm here to help you feel your best and perform your best. Today we're talking all about the topic of vulnerability, okay? The fear of being seen as weak or vulnerable. Now I know a lot of people who struggle with this, and first of all, I gotta tell you that you gotta have vulnerability if you're gonna tap into the flow, okay? Because in that first initial phase where you feel that resistance or that struggle phase, you need vulnerability to let go. You need vulnerability to be able to not be so attached to the regular way that you thought it was gonna go and find the improv pocket, find the spontaneity in that moment. And oftentimes it takes an ability for you to not force the situation, but actually soften and distance yourself from it so that you can get something out of it. So once you are vulnerable, you actually expose that thing into the light, and then you can actually do whatever you want with it. You can let it go, you can hold on to it, you can, you know, make it a part of your storyline, you can edit it. But honestly, not shaming yourself for it, because being vulnerable, hey, it's a natural part of being human, okay? Soldiers are vulnerable when they're going through a battlefield their minds on the floor, right? They're vulnerable in that situation. So a teenager who's had way too much to drink, they're vulnerable, they're in a vulnerable situation, okay? An artist who's scared of putting their art out there for the public to judge and perceive and, you know, critique, that's vulnerability. So there's not one way the vulnerability is being manifested, okay? It's, it's not like Morty going, oh my gosh, Jessica, you're the love of my life, or whatever, right? It's basically saying that I'm willing to have a deeper connection with this other person by getting vulnerable. I'll give you another example, man. Think about all the Byronic or anti-heroes in different shows that you watch, right? We love them because they're imperfect characters, right? We love them because they're vulnerable, because they have this little tiny flaw that keeps showing up, but that's what makes their character whole. That's what makes their character interesting. So similarly in your life, if you were just this perfect character all the time, that's cool, people will respect you, but people also will kind of be intimidated by you. You know, but what if a multi multi-millionaire came to you and told you that he had a drug addiction problem and he got over it and that's how he made his millions. I have a deeper rapport and respect for that person who's been through that journey, right? Not necessarily saying that you have to go through, you know, bad journeys or messed up timeline just to, you know, prove that to the world. But I'm, I am saying that there is a deep sense of connection that I'm getting. If he's opening up about that, it gives me permission to open up about something just as vulnerable. And so it creates the safety in this kind of uh, intimacy, this pocket of connection with other people. I want you to include in your definition of strength, emotional openness. Start to understand that emotional openness and transparency is gonna help you with this element and with this fear. Another thing is being willing to seek support, right? A lot of us, we don't seek the support that we actually need. There is a strength in vulnerability, but too much of anything can also become, what? A blockade around your own potential. Like in a relationship, right, where both partners feel comfortable sharing their own, expressing their own opinions. This is a buzzword, right? So, and so yeah, man, if you just read some Brene Brown and you think you can be vulnerable and you know, you're talking about this, okay, cool. Are you vulnerable when it matters? You can be vulnerable on social media, like, oh, you know, I just lost something or I did something bad. Okay, that's a confession. Okay, that's not vulnerability, that's a confession. Vulnerability and confession are two different things. So between vulnerability and self-protection, there is a line. Number one, you gotta understand how to set healthy boundaries. If you're not good at that, that's what you gotta work on. That's what you gotta work on, calling things out in the moment. It's difficult, but it's gonna help you. You know how you get good at this, man? Effective communication. Effective communication won't make you appear like a pussy or, or a bitch, okay? Effective communication won't make you sound weak. It'll actually make you sound honest and like you're a person of high integrity, right? Being vulnerable is not a bad thing. It's just how you're handling it or how you're being perceived. You see, if you're being perceived as the type of person who has no self-sufficiency, can't take care of themselves, always has to depend on others, you know, always has to people please to make up for their lack of, you know, self-worth and, and so forth. Yeah, that's not gonna be a good look, right? So last night was the super moon, the full moon, and we did a ritual with King Nixa. 
it was very very powerful channeling session with King Nixa. If you're interested in that, I still have the recording of that. So if you want the guided meditation as well as that, I can uh, email it over to you if you are interested. We also have, of course, the Costa Rica retreat, which if you haven't been following along, hey, wake up. It's going to be an amazing event. Basically, you don't want fear to freeze your life experiences, okay? When you let fear freeze you, you don't allow a lot of the greatness and the gold that life has to give you. Just know whatever situation that you're vulnerable with, you're not the only one. There is a chance for you to be better again. As long as you accept, hey, I'm not in a good condition right now. I'm having a hard time dealing with this, right? And to have that sense of vulnerability, you need safety and trust, right? That's why you have to have a good rapport with the person you're being vulnerable to, okay? You don't necessarily need to be so vulnerable to the point where you're like oversharing or needing to over explain yourself about everything, okay? That's not vulnerability. You don't have to fight this alone and you can let others into your world. Just remember that, okay? You can let others into your world. You don't have to always be isolated and in your bubble. You know, for a lot of people who show up to my happiness studio, they've been repressing that same problem for years and years and years and years, okay? Without seeking for help, just because there's some stigma against being seen as, you know, healing or broken or going through something or, you know, in a sad state or, we get that. I mean, I found it bizarre how, you know, the, the whole Andrew Tate situation with Aiden Ross, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but, you know, of course, Andrew Tate, he went to jail and, um, Aiden Ross got addicted to codeine or lean by the time he was in jail. And so that goes to show you that how important, right, a role model is to somebody. That the moment they're gone, they go back to their old ways and their old patterns, actually. Because of his lifestyle, because he's a Twitch streamer, because of, you know, all these rappers who are drinking lean, he got into that. Right? He just got into that. Let's just say, like, the way Andrew handled it, he was like, And you started drinking liquid heroin, or however he speaks, right? Now, if he feels that much resistance towards it, you know, he feels this backlash, like this kind of slingshot effect, right? Mm, you're gonna quickly fling back to that thing. So first of all, you have to get towards acceptance. You have to be like, I'm doing this thing, and it's okay. What if everybody accepted the fact that I did this? Okay, I bite my nails or, or whatever the habit is, right? I bite my nails. Instead of shaming that, what if someone was like, you know what? You bite your nails, it kind of matches your character. Kind of cool, right? What would you do then, right? You would be like, whoa, wait, wait a second. This is actually, huh, right? You would soften. You would allow it in. You would be willing to accept that thing and eventually let it go because it has no power over you anymore. Don't let anything outside of you have power over you. That's the thing, right? Even me, like channeling these different deities, I understand that I first need to connect with the source of the universe, God, the creator, all praise the most high, in order to get even access to these other energies, other beings, and so forth. Vulnerability is me recognizing not everybody's gonna resonate with that, not everybody's gonna understand that. Number three, a lot of people might be projecting onto me about certain things, or maybe as I step more into my light, it's gonna bring those moths that get attracted to the flame and get drawn towards me more, right? It brings out all the shadows out of the woodworks. As Epictetus puts it, it is impossible for a person to begin to learn what he thinks that he already knows. Okay, so you gotta empty your cup. You gotta get into that Shoshin mindset, man. You'll be unable to improve, unable to learn, unable to earn the respect of others. If you think you're already perfect, you're a genius, you've already done it. So vulnerability is a byproduct of life, okay? Due to fate and fortune, we're gonna have to be vulnerable at times. And your own comfort actually convinces you that you're not stuck, that you're okay, that you know, things will happen and time will pass and time will heal and all these things. The Stoics knew that stagnancy was a type of death. The person who has never been challenged is a tragic figure. Why? Because how will they test their faith? They have no idea what they're even capable of. Be honest with yourself and challenge yourself to do better. That's it.
As Brene Brown said, you know, I don't want to quote her, but she has a good quote on this. Vulnerability sounds like truth, but feels like courage. They aren't always comfortable, but they can never be classified as weak. You hold on so tightly to the identity of who we think we are. Holding on to the ego or the identity patterns is a reason why you've, you're finding vulnerability so scary. Because a lot of your identity was actually formed by people who love and care about you and wanted you to appear or be a specific way. And once you try to work on that or challenge that or, you know, shake the boat, of course you're gonna feel incredibly uncomfortable. If you still have this perfectionist manifesto like kind of brewing in your mind, like people need to be like this in order for me to communicate with them or people have to match this criteria or, you know, you're kind of putting people in hierarchies and constantly comparing yourself with others as you walk into the room, that's stopping you. Understand that that's actually stopping you from belonging. Okay, belonging is the biggest, biggest theme of my life that I've had to overcome, okay? And it actually comes from my core wound. If you don't know what a core wound is, shoot me a message because you're behind, okay? So all the things that you feel you're vulnerable about, where you feel like, oh, these are big elements of my childhood. These are all these bad memories that keep showing up. Write them down, expose them to the light. Now that you're more conscious of them, they're no more your shadow, you see? Because they're all written up, you know about them, but now you just need to integrate them. You need to incorporate that in a healthy way, reframe it and allow yourself to live in the light. Acknowledge that that is a tendency of yours, but then choose to make a choice to actually be in your divinity. For instance, I'll give you an example, watching the news, that's what the Stoics would call an external indifferent, right? Those things that we're seeing, we can't necessarily change them right there on the spot. We can't control those things right there on the spot, right? And so, but what it can do is it can remind us of our own character, right? Like these horrible, atrocious things are happening, reflecting back to me that I'm not gonna make those mistakes. And actually it's reminding me to activate my righteousness, right? Activate my goodness within me. And oftentimes you want to have this sense of a light goodness. And, uh, you know, the cure to a lot of your mental issues is recognizing that the world can actually be a good place and coming back to that understanding that the world is a good place, that human nature might be corrupt. However, the world by itself is a very beautiful, glorious, illustrious, heaven on earth if you decide it and make it so there's people living on this planet who have you know different entities and different you know things stuck to them like if you're on the path to awakening or you know self-realization enlightenment whatever you want to call this thing we have a program it's called the adepts program okay the primal sutra adepts program definitely check it out i'll be vulnerable enough to say that i've been experimenting with you know, flow state experiments and, you know, theories and ideas for the longest time. And I think there's a lot of value in that information. So, you know, risk is a flow state trigger, right? Hey, for an athlete who's in a competition, they have a physical risk of injury. You know, so many things can happen, but that's a vulnerability, you know? That is a vulnerability, it is a risk. You gotta understand that that's a risk and modify, adapt, you know, weave, live this world according to how you prefer, not how you were raised, not how you were sustained, not how you were brought up, okay? But what you're going to choose to do. Do you realize how much freedom you'd have if you actually stated to a person like, hey, I'm, I'm actually really nervous to talk to you right now, but you seem really cool, right? But you don't sound nervous, you're just being honest. That's why it sounds real, it sounds clean, right? It sounds authentic. It's not like, hey, I'm so nervous. To Those are semantics, right? Those are just logistics. Those are just your heart beating fast and other things. But the truth, the authenticity of me going, hey, I don't usually do this. That's vulnerability. You get that? So if you can sprinkle a little bit of that vulnerability into your daily life, into your conversations, you can actually find yourself in the flow with a lot of people, right? I remember one time when I was in LA, I went into like a Barnes and Nobles and the guy was like, you know, 
he was so sad and whatever. And, and then I told him I'm a positive psychologist. And then he started to like spill his guts out, right? Father's not home and I'm, I'm working an extra job and I have to take care of my mother. And I can't believe that, you know, he went into this kind of rant, this story, because why? Because I built that rapport, I built that trust saying, what's going on? He didn't answer me. I said, hey man, what's really going on with you? Why are you not smiling today? You know, I, I was vulnerable. I was honest in that moment, right? That little bit of awkwardness, got this person to oh, just open the faucet, right? The valve of just like, oh my gosh, this person's not gonna judge me like everybody else and just kind of, you know, put on this social mask and have this weird, polite, distant conversation with each other about the weather and then we're dipping, right? There was something real happening in that moment that I'm gonna have to look at and reflect on actually, you see? So these moments are golden, man, and they come from vulnerability. Now you can change that word around if you don't like it, if you think it, you know, it's a weird word. I don't want to be vulnerable, whatever. Change the word around. Being real, right? Being dope, being trill, whatever you want to say, right? It, does, it doesn't matter what the word is. It matters how you use this as a trigger, as a skill set, and maneuver it, and also make it a part of your own understanding of strength, like I said, right? Emotional openness is a part of strength. It's actually very courageous that you're doing that. And the fact that you're seeking out for help, I think that's badass, bro. It's not a lot of people do. And the people that do, do. Haha, <laughs> he said doo-doo. The people who do that get the greatest amount of change. The greatest unreal transformation. And hey, bro, you've seen my surreal transformation over the years. I'm not the same person. Definitely not, right? So I'm gonna leave this video here. Give it a thumbs up. You already know what to do. Hit all those buttons, notification bell, and we'll be back. And we back, and we back. Upward spiral gang, may we never be the same again. May the flow be with you. We're all gonna make it, us.